Beauty for Ashes, Receiving Emotional Healing, Chapter 1, Trophies of Grace. Many people appear to have their lives together outwardly, but inside they are emotional wrecks because they have been traumatized by abuse. A victim of trauma is someone who has been wounded physically or emotionally by some sudden or substantial shock that creates severe and lasting damage to the psychological development of that individual. I believe there are many traumatized people in the world who have been so abused in the past that they are psychologically deficit. They are unable to function normally in everyday life. There are people who have been through such trauma that it severely jarred their emotions because they endured something that was so awful it was unspeakable. Surviving the trauma of abuse can throw people into a state of psychological damage that prohibits them from functioning properly in relationships with others. Such victims do not understand what is wrong with them or how to get out of their destructive behavior patterns so they can live a normal life. That was my situation before I learned how to gain the victory over the trauma in my life. Through seeking God and reading His Word, I found that the Lord's main concern is our inner life because that is where we enjoy His presence. Jesus said, For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among you, surrounding you. Luke 17, verse 21 emphasis mine. This book is a summation of how God taught me to triumph through Christ over the tragedy of abuse in my life. After I had spent many years preaching his word, God led me to 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory, and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. One Thanksgiving morning, a spirit of thankfulness began to rise up within me as I considered all that God had done for me. He spoke to my heart that day and said to me, Joyce, you are a trophy of my grace, and you are helping me get other trophies. Then I had a vision of a display case in heaven filled with trophies. I understand that when someone wins trophies, it is because that person is a champion at what he or she does. If people have baseball, golf, or bowling trophies displayed in their homes, it is obvious that they have spent a lot of time developing their skill in that particular area. God is the champion at bringing people from a place of destruction to a place of total victory. As they reach that place of victory, they become trophies of His grace, and they are set on display as a fragrant reminder of God's goodness. I share my testimony in this book to help those who are still in the process of becoming a trophy for God. Through both tragedies and triumphs, I have learned that Jesus is my King, and He wants to be yours too. The kingdom He desires to reign over is our inner life, our mind, will, emotions, desires, and thoughts. The Word teaches clearly that the kingdom of God is not a matter of getting the food and drink one likes, but instead it is righteous, that state which makes a person acceptable to God, and heart peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. He who serves Christ in this way is acceptable and pleasing to God and is approved by men. Romans 14 verses 17 through 18. In other words, if God's kingdom rules within us, we will enjoy righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We will also be acceptable to God and approved by men. Jesus said that we should not worry about external things such as food and clothes, but that we should seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, His kingdom and His righteousness his way of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given us besides. Matthew 6, verse 33. Before all else, we are to seek the kingdom of God which is within us, and then all of our external concerns will be taken care of. When we accept Jesus as our Lord, He rules our inner life and brings with Him righteousness, peace, and joy. No matter what difficulties or trials we may experience in our outward life, if we are whole inside, we will not only survive, we will enjoy our lives. Our inner life with God is much more important than our outer life. Therefore, emotional healing, which I also refer as inner healing, is a subject that needs to be discussed in a scriptural, balanced way that produces godly results. The Apostle Paul said that we can be assured that He who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up also with Jesus and bring us into His presence. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 14 and verses 16 through 18, he continued, Therefore, we do not become discouraged, utterly spiritless, exhausted, and wearied out through fear, 
Though our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day after day. For our light, momentary affliction, this slight distress of the passing hour is evermore and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory, beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all comparisons and all calculations, a vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are visible are temporal, brief and fleeting, but the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. Everyone is subject to what Paul called momentary afflictions, and some of us have suffered what seemed at the time to be unbearable emotional pain. But Jesus came to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. Luke 4, verse 18 through 19. The King James Version of verse 18 says that Jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted. According to Strong's exhaustive concordance, the word translated brokenhearted in this verse is a combination of two Greek words, cardia, meaning simply heart, and suntribo, which means to crush completely, to shatter, break in pieces, broken to shivers, bruised. I believe it. Jesus came to heal those who are broken inside, those who are crushed and wounded inwardly. If you have been traumatized by abuse, it is my hope that this book will serve as a roadmap to get from the ashes of devastation to the beauty of health and wholeness in your inner self. I pray that you will find this message to be simple, clear, and powerful, and that the Holy Spirit will enable you to follow him to your destination of peace and joy. My prayer for you is paraphrased from Ephesians 3, verse 16. I pray that you will be strengthened in the inner man through the power of the Holy Spirit and that he will indwell your innermost being and personality. I also encourage you to always remember God's promise found in Hebrews 13, verses 5 through 6. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me?